there, I'm Terry Notary. I'm playing the creature on the film, uh, Attack the Block. What was important to me about the aliens was that they were understandable in terms of existing animal behaviour. So if my aliens could do anything from an impossible world, that for me is less dramatically satisfying than if you understand them as creatures and animals. I came up pretty early on with the idea of a, of a silhouette because it occurred to me we could use a sort of rotoscope technique, which basically came from this uh, memories of Ralph Bashke's Lord of the Rings as, as a kid, where he used a lot of um, live action photography that they then painted over to make it flat and like a cartoon. A friend of mine did some art sketches and just randomly he made the teeth green. I thought, man, that's quite a cool idea, and that's kind of the opposite of the black silhouette. And then I thought, what if they glowed, which was probably just a childhood memory of glow-in-the-dark plastic vampire teeth. But I thought, what if they glowed? And then we experimented with that, and we found that it seemed quite effective, because you had this flat surface, and the only sense of three-dimensionality you got was by relating the outline to the teeth. We got Terry over very early in the process. He, he, he worked with us on developing the suit, the me mechanics of the suit, so it was as comfortable as possible for him and so he could be as free performance-wise. And we just really tried to use all his expertise to, to get the most out of it. Well, Jill said it was sort of like a cross between a hyena dog-like character and a, and, a, and a simian character. So it was just sort of figuring out the height of the arm extensions and what the rhythm and the dynamics of the, the physiology of the creature were going to be. It was a long process of just sort of drawings and 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 sculpture and um, trying on the suits and finally ultimately trying on the suits with the arm extensions and moving through a, a, a rehearsal space and seeing how how it looked with the movement that we sort of came up with. Help! Help! So I think we yeah. need to keep yeah. the momentum forward. It can be more fun. <coughs> Should we try one more? Let's, 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 let's get in the head, head on this. Let's get head on it. <laughs> that guy's hairy, man. <laughs> He's good, really. Joe explained them to us you know, in rehearsal because he'd obviously, there have been weeks of tests for him and, and being having them described is nothing like seeing Terry leaping off a bridge onto the road in this incredible, you know, outfit. And that's the thing that is such a blessing on this. This, you know, we have to react to aliens and the aliens are there and they're being amazingly brought to life by these, you know, phenomenal, you know, movement artists. I love the sense that the object is in the frame with the actors. I think that gives you a level of interaction and connection that you don't get when you do work against green screen and stuff. Creature! Go. Go. Can I show you the walk? Yeah. He's got a fan. He's got a booty. <laughs> on the scene um, where Moses has his first encounter with the female alien. And we've got our team inside the costume and she's a fantastic mover. We practiced doing a fight scene with um, John who plays Moses and John had to um, pick me up and you know because obviously I jump on him and stuff and he actually said oh she's a bit heavier than I thought. Gosh a girl doesn't want to hear that. <laughs> Just so you get more of an idea. So here, just need to get, you know, don't hold back. Yeah. You need, just need to your head right in. As soon okay. as you can get a swipe head in, down. Yeah. just put one in there. Okay. Yeah. Shit, there's something in there, brother. She really did a great job. She's got the hardest suit, actually, to wear. It's heavy. It weighs about half her body weight. Okay. Oh, so heavy. Oh. Terry's actually um, um, trained me. He's worked on so many amazing films and done a lot of creature work. He was like the apes in Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. He did the movement coaching for Silver Surfer in the X-Men. He was the movement coach for uh, Louis Leterrier's Hulk. He was a uh, coach the Thompson Twins in Tintin. Uh, he's amazing. Power. Can you give us a thumbs up, Terry? <laughs> give me the finger. <laughs> He's so happy <laughs> all the time. Like whenever we see him, like there'll be days when everyone will be like, uh, 
and then Terry walk past and be like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and everything just lights up and you see like rainbows and everything just goes, ah. They're like the rock stars on set, especially because they're American. So when they walk in, we're like, <laughs> and it's like really exciting. They've got a lot of presents. John, this is when I start licking my balls. Just want to come and jump. <laughs> So it's like, boom, boom. They're amazing. I mean, you know, they are really at the top of their game and they are, you know, an absolute honour to be working with them, really. When he's in costume and he moves like an alien, it is flipping scary. If I saw that, you know, in my block of flats, there is no way I would grab some fireworks and try and fight it. I would run for my life. On the door! Every take you're scared. There's a slight fear. Everything's like, and then like, three, two, <laughs> and then the fear just goes. Whoo. It was actually a bit scary. Because, like, the way it's, it's the movements, when you're actually doing it, you're like, oh, it's felt weird. Can I just say that is actually incredibly scary having this rather large green teeth, hairy thing slamming you. That's heavy as well. You feel it, you really feel it. When you look at them just standing still, you think, oh, it's not that scary. But when you look at them running at you, then it's a different story. Carl and Terry can pick up some right speed in them, and so you sometimes, you know, you're running away, and it's all pretend. I absolutely brick it, because, like, all of a sudden, he's, like, slamming into the, the lift, and you're like, how did you just get there? <laughs> More killing. Try to sneak. You want to bring arms to me now? You want to murder me? Do it, man. Shit. Do it, man. Lost the garage door. Okay. I'm working with psychopaths. I said to them guys, all right, cool. Like, I don't want it to look like half-hearted or something. I want to proper, like, take my legs out from underneath me. I thought they would go, I don't know, 50% speed, 50% damage. They went 110 and nearly took me halfway across the room. I was like, my back was aching for days, but it was the greatest death. Yeah, I'm what makes it so weird is before I take, he'll just be standing there in his costume, just talking to you, you know, hi, how are you? But then right before the take, he psychs himself out and he starts, he, I remember we were doing the chase scene just before I get attacked. And he's saying to me, Alex, you're my bitch. I'm gonna catch you, bitch. He is into it. He, he unambiguously connects with the material and he is not afraid to scare the shit out of the kids. So he was really good to have around. Terry is hilarious. Like, I'm laying there, and he's like on top of me, and he's just going, Okay, you ready? You can be my bitch, okay? Yeah, you rain motherfucker. Okay, let's go, come on. It's that, and you're just like, So, yeah, Terry's hilarious. And I could hear him, he was like, going, I'm gonna rip his head off. And he's just talking, and I was like, Oh my god. <laughs> and he really gets into it. He, he, like, before the scene, he's like, Your ass is mine, you know that? You're my bitch. <laughs> well, we're putting the arm extensions on. We got the uh, flexible sort of articulated hands that we're gonna do for this jump, leaping off the bridge and attacking the kids on the bike. Now! Of course the arm extensions are very challenging. They they limit your movement and you can't grab anything, so you're you're constantly sort of working with these arm extensions and seeing how you can make them look good. There's so many things you can do, for instance, you cannot hold your arms out here because it looks too human, so you always have to make sure you're, you're inside here when you go down, so it's, it's, it's a lot of, if your butt is too hard up, it's not working, you go down, you jump, you synchronize the step when you, you walk. Terry was in charge of the movement of the creature, so he has a huge amount of influence on how the creature looks. I'm controlling the face and trying to facilitate him making it through a doorway, making it through an elevator, or not getting injured. I wasn't dead for real, I was just pretending. <laughs> 
the suit is good until you put the head on. <laughs> the vision out of the head is very limited. You've got 12 servos surrounding your head. It's so loud in there, you can't, you just can't hear anything. Can you hear me in there, Terry? No, can't hear it. You know, a lot of your senses are numbed. And he has an earpiece and uh, I feed him the information. Lunch! You're trusting in your, in your partner there to, to send you off in the right direction. If anything's about to happen, he has to be notified immediately, basically. So we were putting little ticker tapes around just to just sort of be able to hit these marks. One, two, three. You have a certain path or going around the corner. You look at it first, you memorize where you're going, yeah. Yeah. and then you go for it. One, two, three. Good. That was a lucky guess. But still, uh, still sort of a good luck thing. <laughs> we ran into several walls <laughs> along the way. He was like, stop! 8.30 in the morning and I'm sweating my ass off already. It was very hard for anybody on the set to complain about anything when Terry Notary was there in sub-zero temperatures in a massive furry suit dripping with sweat. You know, he worked harder than anybody else on the set without a peep of complaint and with complete professionalism all the way through. The heat of the suit was incredible. <laughs> it was like 20 minutes in that suit and you were just, just burning up. Just, just steaming, literally. I'm Paul Herbert, I'm the stunt coordinator for Attack the Block. Tonight we are doing the Creature on Fire, so I've been training with Terry to do all the moves. Um, I have my safety team here to look after me. Once we've walked through the rehearsals with everybody, everybody knows what they're doing, I'll go off, get into two layers of Nomex, and then put a three layer fire suit on. Then I have a, a border suit, the Creature suit is Velcroed over the top of that. Protect my face, I have a silicon mask, and then we have the Creature head over the top of that. Once that's on, I'll be lit up, and then we'll have 20 seconds of creature playing around until I'm put out. Good luck. Cheers, thank you. Good okay, good enjoy. Thanks, man. Okay. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Move out now, move out. It was a little symbolic. It was great, you know, we were all kind of like, yeah, we need to burn all these suits now. <laughs> Good. Tom Townend, the DOP, and I went to great lengths to light the film with a view to crushing the contrast in post-production so that it became like comic book panels. The blackest black of the creature's fur would be as black as the blackest shadow in the sea. Photographically, I suppose one of the touchstones would have been um, The Warriors and also the sort of earlier films of John Carpenter, Escape from New York, particularly. I mean, these are films that were shot uh, on a fairly limited budget, and the limited budget very much dictated the look of the films, but you know. They're making a virtue of their limitations, which Joe wanted to embrace. Dineg and a very brilliant uh, European company called Fido have, have done amazing work helping what we shot in camera. The way they've done the fur is quite brilliant because fur is very expensive to do. So they've almost, just, they've almost just dealt with a little, almost like a plasticine sausage of fur that has a little bit of dimensionality that they've then applied to the rim of the creature and then just flattened. The parameters for the creature was that it was a light absorbing uh, black outline. And so when they filmed Terry Noder and his crew in the suits, obviously there was light that we then had to take out. So we took out that as a layer. And then we would bring in the jaw and the claw to give it specific uh, dimension. Well, we started off with, uh, with concept work, basically, just drawings, essentially, uh, of, of these teeth. Obviously, we had a uh, very good reference of, of all shots, and, uh, the, you know, Joe really liked the texture of the real teeth, but what, what uh, he felt that was lacking was the animation of it, the, the expressions. 
with some testing and designs for how the jaws and the claws could, could look, we all saw the opportunity that was there to take it to a place where people would go, I wonder how they did that. And that's the sort of holy grail for us. What we did was we, we played around with adding more teeth, making more dangerous looking. So we basically we had teeth going all the way down into the, to the throat of the creature. Um, and also um, we did some, so not just a look, but also did some animation studies of what this thing could do and what would it would look like when it roared and when it, you know, the mechanism of him opening his jaws and closing them. One of the devices that we used to, was to really overextend the jaw in the way that some snakes and mammals are able to do. And that was, uh, I think Joe felt, a really interesting way to, to enhance the performance. I think what, one of the things that Joe really wanted was to, for the audience to walk away thinking that wasn't a man in a suit. Um, and one of the things that, that helped that a lot was adding in a bit more or animation to the different joints and the limbs to give, give the creatures more agility, basically. In addition to the more obvious visual effects of creature enhancement through the film, there's a lot of invisible work that we did with the creature. For instance, um, when Pest comes into the tablock, you think he's got away and the creature comes and grabs him and bites into his leg. What we were able to add in post was just sinking the teeth further into the leg, just so you really feel like he's in deep trouble. The roar that we finished off with is a combination of many different creatures. We've got bulls, alligators, monkeys, elephants, pigs, horses, bears. Lions, tigers, elk, frogs, leopards, seals, cats, walruses, whale and pit bull terriers. Then we introduced women's piercing screams. It's just got that element of screech and scariness that really sort of makes you feel on edge. In some instances, um, when, when it came to, to doing the shots, uh, Joe realised that he, he might want a few extra creatures added in and there wouldn't have been anything specific shot for that. So we would take the, the tools that we, same tools that we used to, to replace the fur for already existing creatures and using that to create a uh, new creature from scratch, basically a complete CG ones. We then took multiple passes, put them together, layered them up to give that sea of seething blackness with jaws and claws thrashing around all over the place that I think really, you know, really adds to the end of the film in particular. Okay. And then uh, yeah. this kind of behaviour I just can't tolerate. Whoever's in that suit get in prison. No, I find them. I find their arse. The plan is that all these design ideas will dovetail right at the last, pass the uh, the grade, and hopefully the end result is a uh, type of creature with a feel that you haven't quite seen before. It's another day at the office. Going home. Honey, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs>